Wow. A lot of dogs are bay, but funny. All right, all right. I I have found something. <clears throat> I have okay. found. I have found Dragon Ball Shonen I slash Yaoi fan fiction. Now, <laughs> these are kind of long, but they could be pretty awesome. So I'm gonna let you guys choose. People in the chat, okay. people in Skype, you can choose which one I read. Right? I'm gonna read you a description of each. First one is Don't Let Go, starring Raditz and Vegeta. <laughs> Leaving the party to celebrate the defeat of Boo to be alone with his thoughts, Vegeta is instead reunited with an old flame for one night. <laughs> All right. here's, here's the next one The Night Before the Morning After. Love the title. There. That one, that this one, one is starring. <laughs> <laughs> just the name alone. Read that one. Just, just read that. All right. Just read the okay. description. Read the description. <laughs> All right. Read the description. Okay. The night before the morning after, starring Vegeta and Mirai Trunks. It's the night before he returns to his world, and Trunks is feeling the sexual effects of the full moon. Then he finds himself <laughs> outside Vegeta's GR. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Read that one. Read All right. that one. I'm going gonna, gonna to start this. This is going to be awesome. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm going to find one of my own to read. All right. Only a few hours stood between the time that he would have to return back to his own world and now. But Trunks was growing restless and bored already. It, it was late at night and he was aiming wonder, aimlessly wa wondering. And he was aimlessly wondering the hallways of his home, Capsule Corporation, with his keen eyesight easily able to assist him in the dark as his bare feet padded softly on the floor. As he went, he ran his hand over the smooth yellow wallpaper, knowing that the home he would return to ha would have rough uncovered walls that could collapse at any given minute. Compared to this place, his home back in the future world was a complete dump. But he loved it all the same and wouldn't change it for anywhere else. Trunk stopped when he felt his hand hit a cold pane of glass in the window. Taking his hand away, he saw the, the smudged print that he, made, that he had made on the clean glass and smiled. Reaching out a finger again, he drew a quick smiling face like the yellow ones that were printed on t-shirts. It was childish, he knew that, but it was something that he had never been able to do back in his own world, because there either there was only smashed glass in the window, or he was running away from the androids. He looked out the window and sighed, misting up the window a little bit more. The, a large full moon stood bright and proud in the center of the sky, surrounded by the tiny stars that were just too many to count, leaning his elbows <laughs> on the windowsill. Trunks thought back to the stories that his mother had told him about the effect that the full moon had upon Saiyans with their tails. One glance would transform a Saiyan into a monkey version of Godzilla, or what he often preferred to think of it of as King Kong with an extra kick. It was only... <laughs> It was only when he had been older that his mother had told him the other effect that the full moon had of on Saiyans. Strong mating instincts. He could feel them now, as strong as they had always as strong as they always had been when he had the chance to stare at the night sky. But he had never followed them before. In a world of fear and confusion, where every day could be your last, there had never been time to take a mate. Trunks' head snapped upward when a new possibility hit him. 
Maybe, just maybe, there was somebody who would allow him to finally release his frustration and pressure that had been building within his body ever since he had reached the right age. It was a long shot, but he had a certain respect for the person that made him fear him a little. But he had to do this. He felt like he would explode if he didn't soon. Trunks made a beeline for where he thought this person might be. Even though it was late into the night, turning a few corners, he soon found himself standing in front of the doorway to the gravity room. Oh boy, where his father would often train. Taking a deep breath, he pushed the door open and went inside. As soon as he set foot inside, his knees and back bent to handle the enormous pressure that was suddenly put upon him. Trunks could see his father near the back of the room, wearing nothing but a long pair of black shorts, doing pushes using only one finger with ease. Hold on, let me, let me take a quick drink of water, because that, that DBZ voice is killing me. And I got dialogue coming up. Dude, there was over 47,000 types of Kingdom Hearts fanfiction. The best. All right, all right, here we go. <laughs> the prince looked up as he heard the door close to see the future version of his sons fighting to stand up straight. You'll find it easier with less clothes on, he called to him. What the hell do you want this time of the night anyway, boy? Nothing much. Trunks tried to not sound nervous as he slid off his shirt to find that it, what his father had said was true. It's just that, well, the full moon is... is up. And you're feeling its effects, Vegeta concluded, but looking at him and stopping his exercise. Why do you think I'm in here? The last time I looked at the full moon, I damn well nearly killed your mother. No kidding? Trunks bit his lip lightly. I didn't know the sands could get so... Would you spit it out already? Vegeta suddenly rose to his feet and came to stand in front of his own son. I'm sure that you didn't interrupt my training just to talk about my bed habits, so what do you want? I'm feeling the effects really badly this time. Trunks spoke slowly, unsure what, on what to say. Unlike you, I've never been able to take a mate to satisfy my urges. I've, I've been, I've held them back for so long. It's almost like something is burning up inside of me now. I need to let it out somehow. So I kind of thought that you would help you out. Vegeta cocked an eyebrow and he finished off for him. If only, only if you feel okay with it, Trunk said quickly. I didn't say that quickly. I mean, if the father-son thing feels too weird, then I can find someone else so once I destroy the androids in my own time. Trunks. Vegeta shook his head slightly, amused. You forgot, you forget that I am a Saiyan, and I know how you feel. I know the pain that you're going through at this moment, because I've been there as well. So, I will help you, but only on one condition. This is a one-night stand, nothing more. You are not to pursue afterwards in any way, way. <laughs> you will go back to your own time and destroy the androids. Do I make myself clear? Yes. Trunks nodded as the, as he took in the heavy smell that had laid on his father's body after a lot of intense training. Th thanks. Quick water. <laughs> and drink. And continue. Good. Vegeta turned the gravity control and flexed his shoulders as the pressure suddenly dropped. Trunk sighed lightly with relief as he was as he felt the invisible weight lift his leave his body. 
He stared at his father's finely toned body that he <laughs> <laughs> that he had fi- achieved after a lifetime of brutal sparring sessions with various opponents. He felt his breath quickening slightly as he kept us on sweeping his gaze over the older Saiyan's body, pushed to perfection in any way possible. His mouth went dry, and he suddenly felt a pair of lips upon his, brushing his mouth lightly in search of some kind of response. 